Strickland and Kasich debate. Did it change the race? From the Battelle studio at WOSU at COSI, this is Columbus on the Record. Joining Mike Thompson this week, Reginald Fields, Columbus Bureau Chief for The Plain Dealer. Karen Kassler, State House Bureau Chief for Ohio Public Radio and Television. Greg Haas, Democratic Strategist. And Mary Ann Sharkey, Public Affairs Consultant. After months of television ads and dueling news conferences, Ted Strickland and John Kasich finally met on the same stage this week. The two candidates for governor debated at COSI for about an hour. They rarely engaged, but mainly just passed talking points past each other to the television audience. Of course, topic number one was the recession and just who is to blame for the loss of jobs in Ohio. We can't keep doing what we're doing. And it's not a matter of being a cheerleader. One must face the facts. One must understand what's going on, look them right in the eye, stop blaming other people. Stop blaming everybody else. When you get hired as a CEO, you have a job to do. And stop blaming everybody else and dig in and create growth. Well, Congressman, I'm not blaming everybody. I'm not blaming Ohio and Ohioans. I'm blaming you and your buddies on Wall Street that acted irresponsibly, caused the collapse of Lehman Brothers, which plunged our economy off the cliff. That's who I'm blaming. Greg House, whether it was the format or John Kasich's familiarity with TV, it seemed like he fared better on television than Ted Strickland. You know, I mean, I, I don't share that. I mean, for, I mean, obviously, I'm a little biased. Mm -hmm. But uh, to me, I, when I see John Kasich, particularly in his advertising a lot of times, I'm starting to think of Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. I mean, he's got that just, uh, you know, well, um, Ohio's got a budget hole, and, that's, and we've got uh, this and that. I mean, and, he, and his campaign is so much, so based on talking about the problems in Ohio, what's wrong with Ohio. And I, I, I think that comes through in a different way than, than some of the talks about the presentation. And I, in particular, thought that was a good moment in terms of the exchange. I thought the governor responded swiftly and, and, and pretty well. Mary Ann, the governor tried to criticize John Kasich for not being a cheerleader for Ohio. We've been accused him of rooting for Miami in the OSU football game <laughs> yes. last week. That was a pretty low moment. <laughs> did, it, did it go over? Did that, did that work? No. I, I, first of all, I thought the joke fell kind of flat. But, um, I mean, the problem is with Governor Strickland, and it's not working, we're going to talk about the polls a little bit, yeah. is that, you know, all this negativity, I think he's run like six to seven straight negative ads, which, I mean, Greg's been a political consultant. I mean, normally you want to build up your own person first. You want to establish your, the record. You want to say what he has done for as governor. And I think that this negativity, negativity, negativity is backfiring. That, but Reggie, I thought that was one of the, you were on the stage asking the question, so you were mm -hmm. closer than any of us to mm -hmm. what was going on. His, John, uh, Ted Strickland's opening statement finally got at what Marianne was talking about. He outlined his record that taxes have gone down, that he reform, he says he's reformed education, that property taxes for seniors have gone down. That's what I think a lot of people have been waiting to hear. Yeah, I think so, because uh, as, as Marianne is saying, uh, to this point, all we have heard is just a bunch of negative campaign ads, um, but I, I think uh, you're going to see them start to shift now to maybe try to get away from that message to talk more about what, you know, Ted Strickland has done in mm -hmm. office. I think the problem to this point is because of where the economy is and the job situation, there's really nothing much they can say about what they're going to do because the, the, the natural follow-up question would be, well, you're in office now, just go ahead and do it. Meanwhile, you have John Kasich at least throwing out ideas, whether you think they're gimmicky or whether you think they'll work, he's throwing something out. So, so you know, voters are thinking one guy is at least talking about ideas and the other guy is just maybe trying to run from his record. Yeah, it's easy to be the Monday morning quarterback if you didn't play on Sunday, mm -hmm. basically. <laughs> Karen, was, was Ted Strickland aggressive enough in this debate? I think he came out swinging because I think the first couple of uh, statements that he made some of us reporters who follow him a lot were surprised maybe a little bit to see him come out aggressively mm -hmm. um, one thing that I heard from a national reporter who was there was that this was the first time that he had heard the governor talk about his record and talk about some of his accomplishments mm -hmm. which speaks a little bit to what uh, everybody around here has been talking about that Strickland has been pretty negative and hasn't talked up his own record and so I do think that that maybe there is a possibility that the campaign might shift a little bit there are a couple of good things to mention I mean for uh, unemployment 
has dropped again. It hasn't plummeted, but it's dropped for five straight months now. There are a couple things that, that could be discussed. And, yeah, absolutely, and, and, and those things are going to be discussed, but I think three quick points. One, the negativity in terms of the two campaigns. The, the Obviously, the, the governor's campaign committee set out to define who John Kasich was, and they spent a, a long time doing that. We'll all wait and see when this is all over with to the degree of effect. Obviously, it doesn't reflect right now, but, but we'll see uh, um, in November. But the second thing is that the kind of negative campaign that John Kasich is running is what the what the governor talked about to a large degree. He's running against Ohio. Now the, the governor shifts his campaign to talk about the successes. L last week, you know, uh, the Youngstown Vindicator reported that the Brookings Institute had named Youngstown, Ohio as the number one manufacturing jobs growth city in America. Mm -hmm. When was the last time Youngstown was number one at anything good? And, and, and <laughs> The second thing is there was the Deloitte. They did have Jim Trussell. Th that's right, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, that's absolutely. They were number one with Youngstown State four times. I forgot that. But uh, the, the I think that last point is that when the governor starts to talk about this, he talks about those five months of growth. He talks about the manufacturing. I mean, we've we've increased while Ted Strickland has been governor the manufacturing jobs in this state by forty thousand, the most important kind of jobs to create. And that's largely due to his re-regulation of energy because you know one-tenth of a cent on every electric bill is a million dollars to every steel company. And, and the fact that he got, he got utility rates in a secure pattern means that, that those steel companies can come here and, and create jobs. Well, and Strickland has not, he has been negative because, and Kasich has not been negative. Kasich has not had to be negative because the Republican Governors Association has been doing yeah. it for him. And so I think Strickland, now you see some unions uh, and, and other groups getting into the race too and going negative on Kasich. I think, you know, Marianne, is, is John Kasich attacking Ohio or is he just attacking the current state of Ohio? Well, I mean, he's attacking the huge job loss in Ohio, and that's why it's resonating with, with voters, because they know it. They know their neighbors have been laid off. They know their family members have lost jobs. They know there isn't health care for people. They realize that benefits have been cut. So it's not as if John Kasich is just kind of coming up with some negatives about Ohio. He's, he's reflecting the reality of what's going on in the state, and it just so happens that Ted Strickland is governor. Would you have better on the facts, Reggie, in this debate as you <laughs> cruise the fact-checking? and facts. Was there a clear winner on the facts? You know, I'm, I'm not certain. There are a lot certain. of semantics, I yeah, think. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm not certain that there was. That, that would be, that's a hard question to answer, mm -hmm. um, largely because they didn't really answer very many questions that were asked. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were asked uh, very specific questions, yeah. and their answers pretty much stuck to their talking points, and they always found a way to get back to what are their main talking points well, without ever answering the question. does not include follow-up questions. Yeah. You yeah. cannot get that's them a to great answer point. questions. That's yeah. a great point about really every kids. debate. But two things I, I do need to point out, you know, the Columbus Dispatch, reported and the Akron Beacon Journal today editorialized on the fact that John Casey continues to use this all funds budget mm -hmm. uh, uh, to reflect the uh, state budget and you know I mean when you've been told in press when you've been told publicly it's been reported on and reported on and reported on and you continue to say it afterwards that's not that's not like the governor saying Florida is fit or is second in jobs um, in unemployment when it's fifth I mean that's just a normal human error to, to but clarify we, John Kasich is saying the state government has grown by 10 percent if you include Medicaid and all that kind of stuff which they really pass through any money pa uh, yeah the, 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 the state that, that government he can't, can't really cut control. that he yeah. could never cut yeah Another point that he, he uh, raised often was saying that Ted Strickland had raised taxes. And what he's referring to there is that uh, the Strickland administration rolled back the final year of a five-year tax cut. Now, and not everyone and, agrees. And the Republicans in the legislature. And, uh, exactly. And not everyone agrees that that's considered a tax cut necessarily. But he did, Ted Strickland, did take credit for the tax cut that was approved when Governor Taft was well, office. to his credit, though, he's stuck with them because yeah. he could very easily have come in and said, I want to well, get rid of all these. Absolutely. So, but yes, the, that, that last, uh, that tax cut, uh, whether there was a tax well, cut or tax increase, again, tax freeze. I, I right. just, I think that Governor Strickland should have just stood up and said, we're, you know, we're bleeding. We've got to stop the bleeding. We're going to, we're, we cannot afford this tax cut. Um, the reason it was a phasing tax cut, as we all know, was to see as year by year whether or not the state could afford it. At the end, the state, you know, the decision was made because we're looking at possibly eight billion dollar deficit. The state might not be able to afford it. I think, you know, the la last thing I'd like to say about that is the governor, when he came in, 
did something and from a good government standpoint was was the right thing to do from a political hack like me standpoint uh, I had a lot of questions with which was not why not write out that deficit that he inherited when he came into office why not force the legislature who had passed the budgets who had created the, the deficit make them deal with it uh, but but the governor you know uh, initiated several uh, attempts to fill that hole that clearly he, he thoroughly inherited a couple of things on the debate there were some TV glitches People, folks here in Columbus watching Channel 10 saw it, no problem. And it actually uh, got and, good ratings in yeah, Columbus. It, it beat Glee. Yes, I by, mean, by wow. a sizable margin. <laughs> but people pointed out that Glee was a repeat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but Some Northeast Ohio. We did not see it. <laughs> yeah. No, we did not get the feed. You know, they had a technical. We didn't get it on the public station. We didn't get it on ONN. You have to tell us, Mary so, Ann, yes. what happened. <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I was watching. Um, the WVIZ, which is your sister station, uh, and uh, so we're listening to the audio and no, no, on a blank screen, and finally they switched over, and the show that they were showing was The Mind of a Neanderthal Man, <laughs> 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 which seemed very appropriate. <laughs> so my point is, if, how many, if only Columbus saw it, how much of an impact might this have on the campaign? Uh, well, I think, you know, the key thing is that when you look for sound bites, you look for bits and pieces of this, mm -hmm. and the fact is, for either side, there weren't a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I do think that this maybe, uh, the, the, this, the case at campaign continuing to use the, these inflated numbers is a minor one in the, in the big picture, but there was no knockout moment. There was no, um, you know, no Soviet domination in Eastern Europe moment. In the and I think why Governor Strickland did not insist on a Cleveland debate, I still can't figure out. Mm -hmm. When that's where the votes are. Yeah, I was just going to say, uh, for in terms of it not showing in Cleveland, I think that was probably uh, most significant for Strickland because oh, yeah. uh, right now the Democrats have an issue with trying to excite their base and get people to actually come out and vote and realize that their their candidate is up for re-election yeah. right now. And Another it, mind of a Neanderthal yeah. yeah. story. <laughs> well, yeah. we'll get to that in a moment. The next morning, the debate was certainly not the big news up in Cleveland either. So let's get to topic two first. The polling is heading John Kasich's way with less than two months to go before the election. Quinnipiac University is out with its latest poll and it shows John Kasich with his largest lead yet. He has a 17-point lead over Ted Strickland in this poll of 730 likely Ohio voters. Kasich seems to be winning over the independents. They're going for him 2-1 to one at this point. In the U.S. Senate race, Rob Portman's doing even better. He has a 20-point lead over Lee Fisher in the race for U.S. Senate. Now, here's why Republicans are doing so well. Ohioans are really ticked off. Only 23 percent, just 23 percent, are even somewhat satisfied with the way things are going. A whopping 77 percent are either somewhat dissatisfied or very dissatisfied, according to this poll. Marianne Sharkey, can Ted Strickland overcome these numbers in seven weeks? It will be very difficult to do. Um, I'm not quite sure at 17 points. I would, I would think it would be less than 10 maybe in the 8 to 10 range. I, I kind of take the middle polls how, and how they're going. And I also kind of factor in the fact that some Democrats are going to be coming back home again at the, at the very end of this campaign. Uh, the fact that uh, you have an incumbent governor, Democrat, running a totally negative campaign, it doesn't help him, it does not help him turn out his base. He's got to turn out his base with a positive message. He's got to have, he's got to have people wanting to come to Just vote. this week, Ted Strickland did start turning to a positive message, and he released two ads. Let's take a look at one of them right now. We're an Ohio company, and we've been here since 1868. Ted Strickland understands the issues the business people deal with. He's made it easier for us to hire people in Ohio. What the governor was able to do was help us keep our jobs and add our jobs here in the state. Why would Jim Hagedorn, a Republican, support a Democrat? Because he's shown a commitment to our business. He's shown a commitment to growing businesses in the state of Ohio. Ted's found a way to get the job done. For you keen-eared grammarians, they use the correct tense of the verb there, or whatever it is, then the Governor's Association didn't get the jobs done. Greg, was that intentional? Uh, no, I, well, I, I guess it possibly, but, but <laughs> I, I, I need to go back to the original thing in terms yeah. of the polling. 
Uh, Marianne alluded to it. I mean, there are there have been three other major polls out: Fox News, Rasmussen, and CNN, that had it in the five to eight range. The governor's uh, campaign today, uh, uh, obviously for for reason, or maybe not their campaign, but somebody let out the the tracking in their race at three. And dispatch and, had it at twelve. Right. And well, the point about all this is, you know what? You know, everybody says which poll's right. Mm -hmm. They all are. But as Marianne said, I mean, or, or alluded to the. The point on this is that it's what universe, what, what is the turnout model? And I, I, I absolutely agree with you that, that the positive message, things like this, are gonna impact Democrats and, and need to be out there. But the second thing is, whenever we've had these big waves in the past, they've always hit around October, mid-October, late October, before people knew them. This thing hit in late August, early September, where people really began to see it. And that means that John Boehner, the uh, that guy from New York, the Tea Partier, that uh, had the uh, you know president uh, as a pimp and the first lady as a prostitute email he was sending around. Uh, the uh, the the guy from uh, Kentucky. Uh, those folks, I mean, maybe in Kentucky, they're not embarrassed of that candidate, but there are a lot of people in Ohio that are right now saying, I'm not gonna vote, and they learn who those folks are and who's gonna take over Congress. But is that gonna they're overcome 382,000 well, lost jobs, though? I mean, those are... There, there's a couple of things that I thought were interesting. Um, you know, likely Kasich voters, 42% said that they were gonna vote for Kasich against Strickland. That was really mm -hmm. more that their vote was not for Kasich, but against Strickland. Mm -hmm. And you still have 24% of people out there who say they haven't heard enough about Kasich yet. So so it's interesting that there are some people out there that are still, you know, could possibly be swayed by different kinds of ads. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I kind of think that figure is really disturbing for Strickland because I think what they've been doing with these ads on the Lehman Brothers and Wall Street all along is, as, as, as Greg pointed out earlier, is to try to define who John Kasich is. But yet now this poll is telling us that a larger number of people are now voting for Kasich to vote against Strickland. I mean, that's got to be a the concern. Number, the number regard. I think really hurts the governor and is that this 42% approval rating. Um, if, you, if you keep tracking it, he, he just can't get above 42%. And any candidate we know through, you know, the ages, any candidate in the low 40s is in trouble. Well, but the last, last thing I got to go back to is in an election where currently the turnout model is very low, very few people are, are identifying themselves as voters. In an election like that, it becomes more volatile in terms of these gigantic changes than in a race like uh, two years ago in the presidential race where 90% of the public was saying, yeah, I'm voting. Well, we'll find out, I guess, early voting starts in what, two weeks here, so, yep, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But the, um, is possibly John Kasich peaking too early, Marianne? I mean. He's riding well, high right now. You want to peak right after Labor Day, so yeah. it's a probably a pretty good time to start peaking six, seven weeks. Um, Can you maintain I, that? I guess is the question. I don't. I don't know. I mean, yeah. if there's, if it's accepted that his baseline is 17 points, mm -hmm. I, I am sure he's not going to yeah. win by 17 points. Mm -hmm. I'm sure at some point the other polls are going to show differently. And I'm still not sure that most voters still have a real good feel for who John Kasich is at this moment. So once uh, they, they do kind of get a better feel for who John Kasich is, that number may move also. I want to go back to the other, other earlier point as well. I still think that Northeast Ohio and how voters turn, whether or not you know, uh, Ted Strickland is going to be able to get people excited enough to come out, um, it's going to be really crucial in this race. And I think right now, Ted Strickland alone can't do it. And I think that's why we're seeing so many heavyweight uh, in the Democratic Party come in. We've seen President Obama. We've seen uh, Vice President Joe Biden and they're Bill Clinton. Yeah. And they're, they're both coming back. We saw Bill Clinton earlier this week. I mean. They, and, I, and they're all making stops yeah. in Northeast Ohio. I actually thought Bill Clinton did a better job of making the case for Ted Strickland than I've ever heard Ted Strickland make, making the case for himself. I, uh, <laughs> Bill Clinton can make a case for a lot of things yeah. real well. I mean, yeah. He's pretty good at that. All uh, right, let's get to our uh, final topic from Northeast Ohio. This has been simmering for months, but this week the corruption probe in Cleveland exploded. And what surely will become the iconic picture of the scandal, Cuyahoga <laughs> County Commissioner and the former head of the Cuyahoga County Democratic Party was led out of his house in chains. A federal grand jury indicted Jimmy DeMora on 31 charges. Investigators say he took bribes in return for county jobs. The FBI says the bribes included a trip to Las Vegas that involved a woman who was paid $1,000 to give him a massage in his hotel room. Moore is the biggest, literally, in a string of names of Cleveland area public officials implicated in this probe. 
Reggie Fields, you know, Central Ohioans have heard about this over the past two years, <laughs> but we haven't been paying that close of attention. Right. Give us a quick summary of what's going on up there. I, I mean, this is, this is probably one of the biggest local political corruption cases in this country's history mm -hmm. is the way it's been described, and it probably very much is that way. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy DeMora well, is a, still is a county, uh, Cuy Cuyahoga County commissioner up there. Mm -hmm. The other major player in this was the former uh, county, uh, county auditor, Frank Russo, uh, and the reason why they were so, uh, I guess, uh, significant and instrumental in all of this is not necessarily because of their roles so much as commissioner and auditor, respectively, but also because they ran the Democratic Party for the, the, the entire state, uh, or no, I'm sorry, not for the entire for the state, county. but for Cuyahoga <laughs> County. We'll get to right? that. For uh, <laughs> Cuyahoga <laughs> County, <laughs> and, and Cuyahoga County being obviously a major okay. county for Democrats and unions and, and such in the state. We got to show this is why the governor's debate did not get a big play, perhaps, but there yeah. it is yes, right there. The plane is. dealer, Marianne Sharkey, has the, I mean, it's a huge story up there. And Greg, how does this well, affect Democrats? Well, first of all, in defense of the massage therapist, she was charging by the square inch. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but but I, I think uh, the bottom line is, and a guy my size can make that kind of joke, um, but I think that, uh, you know, this is uh, uh, not not as big a political factor as some are alluding, and, he, and here's why. First of all, the uh, governor, the attorney general, and others have great cases to make in terms of how they've pursued corruption. They all asked for Jimmy DeMora and, and Russo's resignation over a year ago, uh, and just as they pursued Mark Dan intensively, even threatening to impeach him, um, uh, you know, for uh, John Kasich, uh, Mike DeWine, I can't think of any Republican that they ever went after in their lives. Marianne, how is, how is this going to affect Democratic turnout up there? Well, I've, I think it couldn't have come at a worse time for the, uh, uh, the governor, for, for uh, Lee Fisher running for U.S. Senate, for the statewide ticket, because it is going to suppress turnout. There's no question about it. Democrats in Cuyahoga County rightfully are disgusted. They're fed up. They've had it. They, they've been listening to this. This has been going on for 26 months. We have 44 people who have walked the perp walk at this point. We're probably going to have a dozen to 12 more. We're talking as many as 90 public officials or business leaders who will be indicted and charged. So it's definitely going to suppress turnout. Well, I was reading uh, some of the plane dealers' coverage, and the comments were particularly interesting to me. And I lived in Cleveland for eight years, and, and it's stories like this that, I, as much as I love Columbus and the State House, I miss <laughs> this, you know. But some of the comments, people were writing saying that they had talked to their friends and neighbors, and their friends and neighbors hadn't heard about this or that this was news to them. And I'm just <laughs> stunned. How can, how can you not have heard about this front page of the paper? This is a county commissioner walking in chains into you know the I, federal courthouse it's astounding well and I, but I think to um, to follow up on Mary Ann's point though from a different angle I, I think from a, a local election standpoint it's an issue but I think in a lot of these people make a distinction there's a distinction between the county government and city government in Cleveland and and voters today uh, are really segmented into three areas. Do they vote locally? Are they, are they motivated by state issues? Those are the two smallest groups, and the much larger groups are those that are influenced by national politics. And the national politics uh, issues can far trump this issue. I agree with you, this is an embarrassing moment for Cuyahoga County and for Cuyah Cuyahoga County Democrats, but remember, those indictments came out before the 2008 election, yeah. and we had the biggest turnout well, ever. And in most people's mind, an indictment's a conviction. You, you have to also understand that Democrats in Northeast Ohio will tell you they really don't think Governor Strickland has done much for them or for nor Northeast Ohio. And he really hasn't given them a lot of reason to come out and vote for them. So it's not just the scandal. They really don't have a really strong feeling. I think the vo voter turnout may be 30 percent for Democrats. It could be t double that for Republicans. Reggie, but it goes to the whole trust in government. Doesn't it, though? I mean, the trust in government's way down right now, and here's, whether it's local, state, or national, it's, it's government. Yeah, so I, I, I do believe that it has impacted the Strickland uh, campaign to this mm -hmm. point because uh, it, Governor Strickland has not spent nearly as much time in the Cleveland area uh, in the last few months, and, and that's because how are you going to spend too much time up there and worry about who you're standing next yeah. to for a photo? <laughs> I mean, everyone is somehow exactly. engaged up there, even judges. There were two judges arrested. Strickland even. has asked for them and to resign. And one judge he appointed. Two, right. well, yeah. it's, it's yes. One of both he appointed, yeah. and he's, he's yes. asked for them both to resign. Yeah. Right. So it just makes it very difficult for him to, to even campaign in what's supposed to be his strongest area of the state. You know, you know, one thing, though, to say about government, it was government that caught him, too. It was government that arrested him, mm -hmm. and I think that's sometimes lost in terms of just, just from a more 
more abstract point, but I, I, I get it. I gotta get to our final thoughts. All right. okay. uh, it is time for our final parting shots, our off the record comments. Marianne Sharkey, you're up first. Well, I think I'll go back to what we've been talking about. I really do think the uh, scandal is going to impact uh, voter turnout, and I do think it will be a negative impact, and I've, we're looking at possibly Republican sweep of the statewide races. And Greg? Uh, well, first of all, would it be fair for me to say that I've got a book signing at uh, <laughs> the Barnes & Noble Linux for my book, The Butcher's Thumb, on October 5th at 6 o'clock? Would that be allowed? Or? PM or AM. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> PM. Uh, I, my, my final comment is I disagree with Mary Ann completely. <laughs> <laughs> book signing's good. Go ahead, Gary. And uh, Greg's actually going to be on my show next week to talk a little bit about the book the as well. Stone. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, we've heard a lot about Ohio being, you know, a state that everybody's going to watch, and I think you're really actually going to see that. I know NPR has uh, expressed a lot of interest in what's Ohio doing politically, and I think you're going to see a lot of uh, reporters coming through this state in the next couple of weeks. NPR is Robert Siegler was in town yes. this week. Yeah. And Reggie. And you know, we don't know what the poll, which polls are really accurate, but if uh, John Kasich really is up by double digits or wins this race by double digits, I think the Democrats will also lose control of the Ohio House as well. Okay. My final comment, let me ask you one more time to please tell us what you think of WOSU's programming, especially WOSU Radio's talk and, and news programming. We urge you to go to our website, WOSU.org. Look on the lower left and there'll be a little uh, link that says take this survey. We're trying to form a pool of listeners and users of WOSU to, to give us some feedback, what we're doing well, what we're not doing well. So please check out our website, WOSU.org. Also on our website, streaming video of each and every episode and links to our Facebook page and our Twitter feed. So for our crew here at WOSU at COSI and for our panel and for the approaching firefighters, I'm Mike Thompson. Have a good week. <laughs>